I take this opportunity to give an introduction of OpenStack, which is an open source program primary cloud. So this kind of, uh, if you go to the OpenStack uh, website, it has this diagram at a very high level of what it does. So basically, um, what it tries to do is build a private cloud solution on top of uh, you know, standardized uh, hardware, which is uh, you know, uh, Intel x86 uh, you know, hardware. And then you know, its software allows you to uh, implement either compute, networking, and storage functions, and then provide APIs to different um, applications. In the meantime, it has a dashboard. So it's a high-level kind of a diagram of uh, what the, you know, the system is. Now, um, since this is an open source program, you know, a brief uh, note on history, um, it's actually a relatively young project. It's created uh, back in 2010. At the time, Rackspace was uh, considering rewriting some of the infrastructure code, and then they're considering open sourcing. You know, that's, uh, um, they had at the time a cloud file, which today becomes an uh, object store and a Swift code base. And uh, NASA at the time um, also has uh, what is called a, a low bundle, which is uh, um, for the uh, provide the VMs. So these two efforts are going at the time, and then they were thinking to open source uh, together. So that's why um, they come first and the form of the base for OpenStack at the time, you know, back in 2010. And there was a design summit you know, held in um, Austin um, in July of 2010, and later on, you know, the official um, program was launched at uh, you know, the Austin conference, which is an you know, O'Reilly open source uh, conference. So that's kind of the history. And uh, you know, OpenStack uh, is uh, using a six-month cadence for the project release. The idea is that every six months, we're going to try to release a, a newer version. And, and the release, the number alphabetically starts from A, you know, because this is kind of the origin of, uh, um, of the program in Austin. So that's why the first release happens to be you know, uh, Austin. And then you know, there is uh, you know, an A, B, and then you know, and then move on. So basically, initially they have uh, only kind of a simple LOBA and uh, you know, a Swift code base, and later on they add new modules. So as you can see, you know, and right now we are actually this is actually outdated. You know, there is a final release uh, back in April, and in uh, October um, last year it was uh, what's called a Liberty release, an AR release, right? So that's uh, the basic uh, timeline of the project. So um, this something related to the uh, recent events, you know, and the Liberty release was uh, released uh, in October. Uh, what happened is uh, they would hold a design summit uh, after the release. For example, this uh, you know, the next release would be in Chaka, then they have a, a design summit after the Liberty release. So that was actually um, happening uh, in Tokyo uh, back in um, October. So similarly, the target date for the uh, Mitaka right now is April, and then after that, it's going to be a design summit. I, I think this time, um, the design summit is going to be in Austin again. All right. Now, um, the mission of the program is try to, you know, uh, I, I get a, a call here, you know, try to produce a, a, a ubiquitous uh, open source cloud uh, computing platform that will meet the needs of public and private. So it's uh, actually quite an aggressive goal, you know, public and private. And, and then, you know, and by being simple to implement and massively scalable. So that's kind of the mission of the uh, program. Of course, it may not be easy to uh, achieve that, but the community is trying to, you know, take this as a mission for the program. And this is an open source program. And, uh, and it actually promotes what is called four opens. Uh, one is that uh, it is open source, you know, it's using the uh, Apache license uh, 2.0, which is uh, um, you know, more like a, a liberal uh, open source uh, license model. And the code is on GitHub. You know, the namespace is OpenStack, and there's many different projects uh, you know, under the OpenStack. The other, the second open is open design. So, uh, 
as I mentioned, there is an every six month design summit you know, open to you know, the public, and also you know user developers or upstream project will get together and then have discussions and then you know and share the design concept for the uh, next release. So it's kind of open model, open design model. Another open is open development, so they have a public code repo, you know, it's kind of a, a Gary, the code review, and they also have public uh, and CI infrastructure, and kind of uh, um, organized by the community and then serve to the public. Right? So it's an uh, open development. Another one is open community. You know, so basically, the, the project, uh, individual project is actually uh, there is a democracy where you know, at every cycle, uh, people who actually contribute more to the code, they they, have, they can vote uh, themselves for the core member of the project, and also there's an ele election for the project lead of the project. So it's uh, um, it is not like uh, <coughs> like other program where they appoint this uh, key position. This is you know based on the uh, individual's contribution to the project. And uh, project meetings, you know, they use IRCs or go-to meetings, the ISO, and, and also they record the, you know, uh, the history of that. All right, so that's about the four opens of, of the program. Now, um, here, uh, I just give high-level interaction of some of the core services, and I think my friend Shin is going to dive into uh, Neutron, the networking and components uh, later in a separate uh, part. So uh, my interaction is uh, at a very high level. So and uh, this are the, uh, some of the core components. One is called Nova, that is kind of a, a compute services. So it manages the lifecycle of uh, you know VM instances in an OpenStack cluster. So it will handle the tasks like uh, how to spawn a VM, how to schedule, and uh, how to decommission you know uh, this, and then according to certain policies, for example. You know. um, and here is kind of uh, you know the history, the maturity of the uh, of, of the component. You know it has been uh, available you know for six years. This one of the first uh, component in the OpenStack program. And there's a neutron, which is uh, as I mentioned, you know, she later is going to in more detail and interaction <coughs> of that. You know, so basically, it's trying to provide APIs, you know, for the virtual networking, and and then. The Swift is an object store, and that's uh, you know provide uh, something similar to um, S3 services where you have uh, you know your uh, reference to different objects, you know, and then it has like a scalable architecture, and also the data is internally um, has replications and things like that. You know, this, uh, um, three of the core services, and the other one is what is called Cinder. This provides uh, a block storage for the VMs. Now, Cinder, um, there is another, um, if you are um, watching the uh, open source development, there is an a open source program called Ceph, which was uh, uh, started by uh, UC Santa Barbara uh, research uh, program. And then later, uh, they got uh, uh, purchased by, it's got acquired by uh, Red Hat. So right now, um, Ceph is usually used as a backend for the Cinder. So this is very common. Um, you commonly use the configuration of OpenStack you know, with, with a, with a uh, set uh, providing a block and a service. And there is another um, uh, core service called Keystone, which is actually uh, the uh, identity and access control management for uh, different users, different services. And so almost all uh, services has to use Keystone for like, uh, either query uh, about service endpoint, you know, like user access control and, uh, and security related services. And the Glance is uh, another core service that used for uh, like image services. So for example, if uh, uh, in Nova VM, you know, you want to put a particular uh, VM with specified uh, images. So this is actually the backend service store for a uh, different VM images. All right. Of course, uh, the back, uh, Backend storage could be Swift, uh, Swift or could be uh, Ceph. Because Ceph also provides an uh, object store interface uh, to external uh, systems. All right, so that's uh, about uh, you know, um, six uh, core uh, services. Um, now, since uh, private cloud is actually a complex uh, you know, 
problems, and then you these six services alone probably won't you know get it. So that's why um, last year uh, OpenStack uh, community adopted what's called a big trend model. So the idea is that uh, we have this core services, but in, we encourage community contribution for ecosystem, like related the service build uh, around the core services. So this is actually um, called a big trend. And this is actually, uh, if you break uh, uh, the individual services, like for example, Nova here, now internally it has uh, different uh, components. It looks like it's very complex. Uh, uh, System architecture background here. There's API for external like, if you launch, you know, um, uh, a VM or you know, uh, or, or, or shut down a VM. And there's also um, Nova Compute. This is actually um, the module that works with uh, different uh, hypervisors, like LibBird and other underlying kind of hypervisors. So this actually uh, Nova Compute is uh, interface with those uh, you know subsystems. And of course, it has an internal database, it has an internal kind of a queue, an MQP based queue, that's for the internal communications. So I'm not going to go into details, but if you break down uh, Swift, it has similar uh, architecture where it's like a proxy uh, as a front end of the different uh, APIs, and then back end it has what is called the different objects, you know, container accounts and objects. And uh, so it's very complex, as you can see. And this is just an example of Keystone service. As I mentioned, uh, it is actually a key component where uh, a lot of other services rely on Keystone for uh, user authentication authorizations. So internally, it has a uh, you know, different uh, you know, policy backend kind of, uh, for the rule-based uh, authentication. Uh, there is a, a token-based uh, backend. And so what happens is uh, um, uh, Keystone services can use its own internal, let's say, database or internal um, um, services um, to answer the query from uh, different services. But in the meantime, it actually support external backend, like for example, in the identity backend, you could uh, interface with Active Directory or, or Open Air Dev and other other systems. And, uh, you know, um, okay, so that's, uh, about uh, some of the major components of uh, Keystone services. And this uh, um, diagram shows kind of a sequence diagram of uh, when a user tries to create uh, a VM uh, using, for example, Nova API, right? So uh, what uh, a Keystone will play a role in these uh, uh, different steps. So user may provide credentials, and then uh, Keystone, uh, what it does, it, it issue a token to the user the token will contain the information about the user, about the you know, identity of the user, about the kind of property for the authorization purpose. And then when user try to uh, make a call to Nova API, Nova is going to verify the token using the Keystone services. So that, uh, you know, of course, there is a trust uh, pre-established between Nova and Keystone. And then once the token is verified, you can go ahead and create the you know, uh, VM, in, uh, VM instance. And of course, you know, this uh, particular VM would require, uh, let, let's say, a glance for the you know, download the image for the initial uh, VM. And also, you may need uh, you know, different uh, virtual ports and uh, interfaces for the neutron. So similarly, um, and, you know, Keystone is playing a role here for the uh, verification and authorization. Right. I think uh, I'm not missing the uh, big trend. Uh, uh, by the way, this is just a um, uh, RPC, uh, the remote procedure call mechanism. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
呃，这个有不同的 authorization 的话呢，必须通过。呃，就说你如果想你后面一步成不了啊，因为你这个托管拿不来的话，他没法 verify 出来嘛，就没法 verify 他的权限，他一定要去做做,做 query。如果在 case 洞里边就就就就 verify 就把这些事情就去做了的话，就事先做好是吧？对，就是我至少每个 micro service 这些 nova 这些 service 都需要再去，像因为这每一个都要去做的嘛。那个更多有 bottleneck。那你怎么把这个 token 的权限 sync 给别的 service 呢？你没有办法做这个 sync。就是说，你这种 design 的话，有一个问题，知道吧？你不知道他 user 会去 query 哪个 service， 你不能把他所有东西都 dump 过去，那 data 可能 payload 太大。就有一种模式，就是说，你这个 decision 不一定在 Keystone 这个 module 里面，你把 Keystone knowledge 都放在这个，比如说这个，这个 token 里面，是吧？但那样的话的坏处就是说，你这 token 信息量就特别大，就是说你，他就是说，他流程里面他有哪些，就是说，就类似这这些东西，知道吧？因为他这个每一个，就是说，比如说流程 service， 他有自己的 data model。完，他他他根据这个 data model 来来 make， 呃呃 ，align with Keystone 那个 token， 才 make a decision， 就是去 grant 或者或者是 deny 这个这个 service。这个，对，我大概明白你的意思。Alright, let's continue. So this is the RPC remote procedure code, and it actually use a, a, a message queue for the purpose. Uh, I'm not going to uh, go into details. There's different, uh, you know, depending on kind of a pop sub model, and then uh, with different topics, uh, or you can have a direct uh, publisher with a direct consumer, you know, with different flow. Okay, so that's a uh, kind of a uh, underlying RPC mechanism. So as I mentioned, the uh, OpenStack is using a big chunk model, and the idea is that uh, the six uh, core services here. Is maintained by the community, but community welcome other services like, for example, messaging services, the heat, which is an important service today for the <coughs> orchestration of uh, your infrastructure. Um, Congress is kind of policy and and, and, and uh, you know, governance services, and there is a uh, you know, ironic, which is a, a, a project that handles uh, uh, parametric provision. Uh, today, uh, a lot of uh, uh, parametric servers. Uh, you're going to use a Pixie, right? For example, to boot up uh, uh, through a network configuration, automatic boot up piece. Uh, but then, ironically, is uh, providing an alternative way of, uh, you know, uh, similar to Pixie, but rather than like uh, using the Pixie to download the file to in install the OS, they, they, they try to write a disk image directly to the uh, to the bare metals. So it's a different approach. And there is, um, you know. Workflow and, and as you can see, this uh, big chain the program will complement uh, the, uh, the core uh, components of uh, OpenStack. Now, as you can see, that's uh, becoming uh, quite a complex uh, you know, program you know, with uh, this many uh, different uh, you know, core and uh, you know, optional services. Uh, heat, uh, I want to point it out, is because uh, you know observation is actually quite uh, important. You know, sometimes you do not want to create uh, individual VMs, uh, you know, through the APIs. Rather, you want to uh, boot up a sequence of uh, maybe a collection of uh, VMs. You know, VM under the uh, you know, same sub or, or two different sub with uh, you know, maybe different services like a load balancer or uh, database services. So what uh, uh, I, I don't know um, if uh, um, you're familiar with uh, Amazon, there's cloud formation, right? similar concept. So cloud formation is uh, Amazon provides uh, individual API for you to, you know, uh, to, to, to launch uh, EC2 instance, uh, instance with a given AMI. But if you want to have a full stack of it, you know, use cloud formation, and then uh, Amazon would, uh, you know, uh, power on those uh, cluster of instance for it. Now here, he is trying to address the uh, same problem. You know. Here it's uh, use uh, what is called a hot template. You know, just a, a template described you know, kind of declarative uh, description of your uh, stack. And it's actually in the YAML format. All right, so. One go into this orchestration of handle containment. Good question. <laughs> All right, so Magnum is, to <laughs> answer your question, Magnum is a, uh, another uh, program that uh, started as a container as a service, 
So the idea is that uh, we, you know, since uh, OpenStack, what it provides is it provides infrastructure to provide a multi-tenant kind of environment for the VMs. But then container today has a lot of momentum, and then you know, application programmer prefer a container for its agility and uh, you know, lightweight and other things. So um, Magnum started uh, to address you know the problem for you know what if I need a container, right? So that's uh, um, you know, this is actually a Red VM project. It started, uh, I believe, uh, just last year. Yeah. So you try to use uh, you know API, you know, um, for the Docker and the Kubernetes backend. Uh, so that's kind of pluggable backend for your for your containers. Um, and also you try to use a heat template, you know, to deploy services. So you try to unify the API and the data model. And also in the meantime, you try to provide much tenant support as the container. As of today, this much time support is uh, very uh, limited. Yeah, so, um, Magnum projects try to um, address that issue from OpenStack, uh, you know, um, perspective. So that's uh, the container uh, service uh, problem. So that's kind of a, a high level uh, architecture of the Magnum services. As you can see, this this part is actually the external part. And this part is a Magnum controller, and this is OpenStack heat and uh, OpenStack core services. So uh, it provides API so that you can call the API or you know pass the heat templates and then and, and then uh, in the in the backend it will uh, make a, a call to whatever the pluggable backend for the container uh, you know uh, management and uh, you know again this is uh, a very high level and uh, you can check out you know, Magnum project. Now, um, every vendor, like for example, major vendor like I IBM, Red Hat, and uh, Cisco. I'm telling you, you know, container is also a networking, networking container, networking the resource control, the management. Okay. 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 So as I mentioned, uh, every major player, like Cisco, you know, including Huawei, I work for Huawei, and other companies uh, spend a lot of resources on um, OpenStack. Now, but OpenStack has this big ten uh, model. Like, how do we uh, make sure that uh, you know, things from different vendors can cooperate, you know, and, uh, uh, nicely? You know? So um, the community has a, what is called Dev Core uh, certification program. So the, the idea is that uh, you know it defines some common requirement. You know, for example, if your API has to be compatible, uh, you know you may add vendor uh, plugins, but uh, you know there must be certain test case you have to pass in order to be qualified as a you know powered by OpenStack program. So and the program is using a powered by OpenStack or OpenStack powered logo. So you have to pass whatever you know, hundreds of uh, test cases for the dev core in order to be qualified for this program. And as I mentioned, you know, OpenStack infrastructure team maintained a kind of CI for the community, and, and then and it's very similar to other CI and components, with Jenkins and uh, Gary, and things like that. The third, there is a, there's a Zoom, which is, a, I believe, is an open source uh, program by, by the OpenStack team. You know, um, this is just a, you know, a high level architecture for the CI infrastructure. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I don't know how much time do I have. Uh, it depends on how long. Okay. So um, this is a very high level uh, of OpenStack. You know, um, and uh, here I want to take the opportunity to introduce uh, another topic. Uh, I'll go over uh, rather quickly. And this is OpenStack deployment. Because uh, when you look at this, there are so many different components, and each individual component, nobody if you open it up, if there are so many different services, and each service would have different config files with you know, a lot of configuration parameters. How do we manage that? Right. So introducing Canvas, sorry, this is my project. So <laughs> this actually uh, started from Huawei, and then it's an open source program. And for our slogan is directing software defined infrastructure. You know, I think Google has the concept of data center as a computer, right? There's a book by, and, you know, this, uh, you know, a few Googlers. But the idea is that you have to work uh, how to scale uh, machines, but you, you treat every kind of uh, uh, 
overall data center as a computer. When you think about it, if OpenStack is the infrastructure for the data center, then you need some tool to boot up your, your computer, right? Like traditionally, you use a CD-ROM to boot you know, uh, a computer. Here, Canvas is trying to play that role. In other words, to boot up a data center with OpenStack as an infrastructure for you from scratch. Uh, so you try to put up an operating software defined infrastructure, current support OpenStack and its ecosystem. And then you know, uh, it has two aspects on it. One is the software configuration and deployment, the other one is uh, monitoring and troubleshooting. And uh, you know, if you're familiar with the uh, uh, Google's DevOps concept, you know, this configuration and deployment is a continuous process. You know, you, you, depending on your monitoring, depending on performance uh, metrics, you may go back and uh, reconfigure or you know, redeploy your applications. So we follow some of the design principle, you know, try to take a holistic approach for infrastructure management. Here, traditional data center, uh, like for example, as I mentioned, we use Pixie to put the uh, uh, you know, OS and then use Chef or Ansible or different configuration management tools to manage your configurations or software uh, installs. And we try to model that uh, as a unified view, you know, through, um, through our APIs. In the meantime, we provide a programmable framework we brought a RESPA API so that you can actually drive the deployment from another program, from OSS or other systems. And also we provide a plugin architecture. I think uh, I'll skip some of the um, detailed information here. So we, as of today, we support like a, a conversion of set. As I mentioned, this is a distributed storage. Usually we provide a, a block um, uh, storage <coughs> for OpenStack similar backend. And there's a um, Open Data, which is a, a SDN controller open source program started by Cisco. And Open Control is a startup and later got acquired by Juniper. So we support the open stack <coughs> with SAP or ODL or Open Control. Uh, we hide the details from the user because as I mentioned, there's hundreds of parameters and it's feasible for cloud ending to manage that. Um, we also you know, open, you know, this follows the four open model of uh, open stack uh, community. Um, we reuse some of our other open source programs. For example, as I mentioned, you know, Cobbler is an open source program to, to uh, wrap on top of uh, Pixie. Okay, when you make a compound, you put that in the parentheses. Few, right? Yeah, I'm going to talk about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could be. So you can't call it. Cobbler, yeah, man. So we're active in open source uh, community, and uh, one is of course OpenStack, and the other one is OPMLV. This is actually driven by a lot of the service providers. Uh, actually, my full-time job is actually to help Huawei manage OPMLV program, you know, uh, in, in the community. You know, this is started by a company like AT&T, and, and uh, you know, vendors like Ericsson and Huawei, and uh, the China Mobile is also uh, very active in, in, in this. And uh, if uh, um, so, uh, Campus is actually um, promo uh, proposed as an installer for the OPMV program. So in the OPMV program, you know, the installer we're competing with like a Miranda's view, you know, and, and the Juju from Ubuntu. And this is uh, you know, the next release is actually coming soon. So I have a team of engineers working very hard to towards this goal, which is uh, you know, coming soon. So we also use uh, Apache license coming from GitHub. And this is our, our, our uh, we try to enter the big chain, so we are using the OpenStack uh, namespace. So Canvas Core is a, is a, a, a kind of core component. This is actually written in Python. Python is a programming language. So this kind of architecture, you know, for the high level. So notice that the dotted box we call it Canvas Core. What it does is provide APIs to the external, and, you know. Uh, Programs. It also has metadata, you know, to describe and model the configuration of a very complex system like an OpenStack or SAP and ODL and other things. It has an internal database, of course, and then there is some internal building blocks for like a messaging and uh, worker and things like that. But then functionality can be divided in three and major areas. One is the resource discovery, because in data center, you know, to to manage like a MAC address itself is a very painful thing, right? 
So and to discover the topology and things like that. So we, we calculate that in resource discovery. discover discover how many server you have, how, how they're connected, and the topology and things. The related information. And uh, here's the OS provisioning, as I mentioned, Pixie. And the uh, package management is uh, for like, uh, different uh, tools that uh, some of you may uh, be familiar with. So uh, we, as I mentioned earlier, we try to uh, use a, a plugin uh, architecture. So all this functionality is actually um, a plugin to Canvas Core. So for example, uh, you know, you ask if uh, we can use a call or ironic for the OS provisioning, right? So that actually could be done through a plugin. So we just uh, didn't have a resource to do that, but uh, our architecture and code base is ready for that. You know? And similarly, um, you know, we today we use SMB based. You know, there's some like uh, BridgeLib and uh, you know, LDP and other kind of uh, protocols for discovery. But you know, we also support IPMI, which is a common interface to manage uh, you know, hardware. And Intel uh, has a concept called the rack scale architecture. We actually did a POC with Intel. Uh, so what is the RSA? So, so Intel is saying that uh, today you have a server, as you're familiar with, right? A server would be a rack server or a plate server, where it has CPUs and RAM and, and things like that. But Intel is saying that for the future, you may not have a server, as, as you're familiar with. So what you have is uh, you have a, 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 you know, a cabinet of uh, CPUs and RAMs, and then uh, through a high-speed, high-efficient interconnect, you can on-demand compose a server. So for example, you know, you have a rack of CPUs, and then right now you need a, a server with two CPUs, 64 gig of RAM. And what RSA does is provide an API for you to compose that server on demand. So you, you no longer have a server. So this is, which is a, a kind of innovative uh, concept. A lot of hardware vendor, uh, like Huawei, for example, we have similar concept, but we don't, we don't follow RSA, but Huawei has similar kind of a research in, in, in toward that area. The idea is that tomorrow you may not have a server as we, we know it today. So we did an uh, integration with them through the plugin mechanisms. Um, this too much technical details. I think uh, I may want to skip this. Uh, but the idea is that uh, a lot of uh, conversion is about conversion parameters, because open stack config file is, is you know, impossible for any one single person to comprehend. You know, you, even some of the open stack experts are familiar with one or two uh, core services, and so they may not be familiar with the interaction with other modules. So that's why we introduced uh, what's called metadata concept is to model the user conversion parameters. But I think uh, I will skip. I give the time uh, you know, to to see. So I'm gonna skip all this, but uh, I want to. Okay, this is just describe how metadata works through a template and other things. Um, you know, uh, also we have a UI metadata. We are using Angular JS. You know, I think. Uh, uh, but then we have metadata to describe the UI so that uh, you can change your UI through the data configuration. Like, for example, you can change the heading without changing the JavaScript code. You change the data file here. All right, so someone asked about the few. So there's some comparative analysis here. So few is actually a, a, a Miranda's, uh, by the way, Miranda is actually a very famous startup in the domain. It has like a Weinberg million dollar, uh, I don't know, third round of VC from Intel, Ericsson, Dell, you know. So it's very famous. And they brand themselves the OpenStack expert. They spend a lot of money in like a, a brand promotion. Like if you go to the, uh, OpenStack Summit, for example, I went to Paris, I went to Tokyo, they, they sponsor fancy parties, you know. You know. So they, they kind of uh, brand themselves, uh, they're very active in, in OpenStack. Um, so the difference here is that we actually uh, have some similarity in terms of the openness, in terms of uh, you know, using some of the components. But OpenStack is, is uh, kind of a, the core business of Mirantis. So that's why a few as an installer that they actually serve the core business. They have no interest to extend to cover other, other systems. So that's one difference. Is. Uh, the other difference is, is that uh, it's very tied into uh, Miranda's OpenStack, which is uh, uh, you know, their own kind of distro. And uh, you know, the plugin um, idea is uh, similar to you know, our adapter's concept. So we have more uh, dimension of uh, uh, kind of uh, extensibility. Than few. Uh, in other words, a few, for example, support Puppet, 
but we support like Ansible and Shell, uh, but we, we treat them as a plugin so you can replace it, so you can actually have a module to enable a topic. But a few, they have no motivation for that because they try to uh, do one thing really, cool, uh, really well, which is OpenStack, when you run this OpenStack. So that's uh, kind of different. But and to be honest with you, I think a few probably is uh, more mature than Compass because Compass is a relatively young project and uh, I only have a small team. I actually have only um, six, Developers now, where a uh, few my understanding is that probably like 30 plus developers working multiple years. Okay. So that's uh, uh, Foreman, which is another system <coughs> tool from o uh, Red Hat, and he's actually started quite early on, and uh, he's written in Ruby and Rails. He's used Puppet for package management. He has API, but the API is not well designed. I look at it; it's kind of a really the API really depends on the underlying plugins, so the it's not consistent, it's really, really hard to understand. <coughs> and uh, OpenStack, OpenStack was added as a patchwork. Red Hat as a major kind of a SI company, they, they actually, uh, Red Hat is uh, their core business. But in, in terms of deploying OpenStack, Red Hat has tried different tools like PackStack and StatePuff, but then they abandon all that. You know, they're, they're abandoning uh, 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 format. They're using what's called Tribo, which is uh, another project uh, for the OpenStack installation, I'm not going to cover that. And there's also a Juju. Juju, uh, I don't know if you um, heard of it. Uh, any, anyone heard of Juju? Okay. It's a service orchestration tool from Ubuntu and it's open source. And the idea is that you have one sort of reusable charms. What is charm? Like a good example is uh, WordPress, right? WordPress uh, is uh, a very common blogging software with uh, MySQL, with PHP, and uh, uh, it's very, very uh, popular. So how to deploy, uh, let's say, WordPress, right? So there is uh, this charms concept where you have a YAML config file, you specify what's your connection between your DB tier and your web tier. You know, do you use Apache for your web tier or do you use Ajax? And, and, and then you know, Juju will deploy that configuration or install the software package for you, right? So as a framework. And the charm is reusable. So which is a, is a fine framework, I, I think, in my, in my uh, opinion. But OpenStack support, however, uh, with Juju, is very complex. Yeah, because Juju is a generic framework, it's not specifically designed for OpenStack. That's why it has like a you know, really UI you can drag and drop and uh, you can configure. But then in order to use Juju, you have to change a lot of config files. And then it, is that, uh, in, my, in, in, a, in my opinion, it's, it's very less that user friendly. And there's some demo, uh, uh, you know, the view, these are, these are Compass uh, uh, web UI. We're using Android JS as a front end. Uh, actually, this is a key message today. <laughs> we need help, uh, okay? As I mentioned, uh, Compass is an open source project. So we, we, we are looking to, this, uh, we have, I have a small team, I only have six people, but uh, we're looking at the EOK for the local management and analysis. EOK, for those who don't know, is, a, is kind of an elective search at Logstash and Kibana. Kind of very commonly used tools for the uh, log management. Uh, we also uh, need to uh, process operating system log messages for the progress bar. You know, in, in our uh, web UI, we give user a kind of visual view of what is the progress of the current installation, right? So we need improvement on that. So with open control integration, open control, we support the basic configuration, but uh, if there's a, you know open control expert, I welcome your uh, help. And there's ironic, uh, you know, uh, integration as we mentioned, you know, we could use ironic, but just I don't have the resource to do that. And there's a, a related topic is uh, microkernel. The idea of this is that uh, we can uh, discover uh, the uh, resource uh, at more granular level. Not only we discover the mag, the topology, but also we discover how many you know hard disks it has, what, uh, how many you know interest card, and, and, and things like that. And there's Android JS, we need help, or React JS. I think uh, another gentleman just mentioned they're using React JS. Um, and, and then you know we are open source, uh, open development. So if you have interest, uh, you know, uh, contact me, and uh, you can do on your part time. And we can also pay you. You know, we I do have a contractor position available. So it's kind of a six months contract. You know, if you uh, know your friends in greater areas, you know, uh, come talk to me. All right, so that's it for my uh, presentation, and uh, thank you for, for your time. All right. <laughs> and, 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 and.
那个 micro kernel 是什么东西 ？Razor micro kernel。呃 ，Razor 是一个 open source program， 就是说，实际上就是在，呃，就是说，呃，它的基本 idea 就是说了，你 install 一个小的 OS， 那个 OS 上报它这个硬件的信息。Uh, 我不知道那个 ，I don't know if、uh, any of you use Chef. Chef is a kind of a、uh, compression management tool. And then what Chef does is, uh, uh, initially it will just、uh, gather the hardware information and report to the Chef server. Uh, but then, you know, I, for us, Chef、uh, that stage is too late. We want to something before open system is installed. We want to know more about the hardware. So the microkernel is kind of uh, install a very uh, You know, small OS is is a is sole job is to report the hardware capability to our server. So this, this is a, yeah. Small OS, 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 Actually, I, I don't know. I don't know if uh, uh, my my intern did this research. So I think. 就是非常小，它就是基本上就是最简单的 RAM disk。它的目的就是发现你这台机器里面到底有多少个，有多大的 RAM， 有多少个 CPU， 有多大的磁盘，然后把它放上去，然后你做完，你做那个 topology 管理的，你就知道我这台机子都是什么样的。它就不需要人工去把这些东西都输入进去。啊，对，就是，对我们我们在这方面是需要需要 help， 就是这个、这个是现在没有 resource 来做。嗯，其实 Ironic 已经支持这个。哎哎，对 ，Ironic， 所以我们是我们是在 looking to 这个 Ironic integration。嗯，这个是不是像那 BMC 那种东西去去装那里边？类似的类似的，对。那就需要 hardware 去去真正的有那么个 chip 装上，对不对？呃，如果 Microsoft 的话，它不需要 ；Microsoft 的话，相当于说在装的过程中，它就自己就是说。可能是不是你回来就当做一个自动一开发过来 P X E， 对 ，OK， 好，谢谢。因为我们刚好最近也在看这方面的东西，所以也做了类似的。就它其实就是，你你你如果有一百台机子，其实问题是你要入库、要登录这些一百台机子，其实很麻烦的。因为你每个 C P U、每个机器有多少个 C P U， 它的 memory 多大，它有多少磁盘，它磁盘是，比如说是 S D A 这种分划分还是 S E。D B 这种不同的这种划分情况，它就装一个很小的一个，然后在在 boot 的时候，它就用 P X E 先 download 下来，然后先装了，然后再就放上去。那就就是装在你的真正的那个 C P U 上，不是 B M C 上，不是装在 B M C 那就说会 boot 两次差不多，先 P S E 到这个上边对 ，run 一遍，然后再再把那个 boot partition 换成你真正的那个那个 box。它这是两步，就是这一步它开始还没有装 O S。它就是先入库，就是把所有的系统先入库，自动就入库。然后之后，然后你可能再过两天、过三天，它再说 OK， 我这五台机子我想装 Open Stack， 的另外五台我想装什么 VMware， 还有五台我就直接想装 Container， 它就可以自动 Inventory Manage。好，谢谢。OK， 谢谢。All right, so、uh, now it's the、uh, Shinstrom and the、uh, Neutron and the SDS program.